Hey everybody, it's Andy Cloudy Milder. Got a vinyl update for you this time. Uh, five records that um, I've finished, uh, given a good old spin to take them out of the inbox, chuck them back on the shelves, or maybe on the get rid list. Uh, let's start with one of those albums and uh, let it not be said that I haven't given this band a damn good go. Um, It'll be a band instantly as soon as I show it, you'll know, you'll say, I thought you didn't like them. And uh, I've tried, I've tried uh, for many a long time. And I recently, um, it's Deep Purple, it's Machine Head. It's a classic album, I know, but I just don't get it. So I was on a, when I bought this, and it was some time ago now, I was on a bit of an Ian Gillen kick. And um, I liked some of the solo band stuff he did from the early 80s. And you know what? I thought I'm going to give that era of Deep Purple another go. This was on cheap on Amazon at the time. I picked it up. I played it. And it didn't grab me. I put it in the inbox. And there it has sat for a long time. And it's time that I confronted it again and uh, gave it one last go. And it just does nothing for me. Um, this is a, well, this is originally out in 1971. This is a 2015, 2016 um, reissue. Very well done reissue. Heavyweight vinyl. Ooh. Heavyweight vinyl. Um, two words describe to me what is wrong with Deep Purple. First one is John. Second one is Lord. I cannot stand those. Uh, the organs, the Hammond organ, whatever it is he plays it just reminds me of um being made to go to church back in the day to be honest with you and um that and the dueling guitars and obviously you know richie blackmore is a guitar god and um you know ian gillen i do like his vocals but highway star is honestly the only song that i get on here the rest of it is uh it's just there um I mean, Smoke on the Water, you can say that's an all-time classic, but who needs to hear that song again? And Space Trucking nearly makes it, but Maybe I'm Leo, Never Before, Pictures of Home, Lazy, oh, it's it's just dreary. I have, honestly, I've tried people, and I know probably many people will be switching off in their droves thinking I now know nothing about um, music. Never claimed I did. Um, Self-proclaimed I did, but uh, not, uh, not um, yeah... I tried, I tried, and um, I cannot keep it. But say so it's a very nice package. It comes with this very kind of bizarre um, lyric sheet, which is really quite long. But um, I tried. Deep Purple are just not for me. Let's move on for something that is for me. Again, this is an album. My God, I've had it in the inbox. I think I bought this. Um, and this is rather embarrassing now. I bought this when it came out, if not on pre-order. And I listened to it a couple of times. It went in the inbox. I was buying so much stuff back in uh, 2017 as this album came out. In fact, I kind of, I've been reflecting a lot this year and thinking that um, uh, it's just awful to have hoarded so much stuff and not actually got around to listening to it and keep buying and, and not giving anything a chance. But now I look at the vinyl prices. I'm actually going back in there. I'm enjoying a lot of the stuff I did buy, listening to it, properly listening to it um, for the first time and realising that uh, if I'd waited till now to buy it, I couldn't have afforded it or they wouldn't exist anymore. So that fear of missing out was actually uh, real. Who knew? Anyway, I am talking about Iron Void. I remembered that I had this in the inbox that I had listened to it when I heard recently that Iron Void have... Um, they're working on, or they've just completed the recording of their fourth album. Uh, this is their third. This is Excalibur 2017, I've mentioned before. It's doom metal. It's true doom metal from Wakefield, England, with a strong new wave of British heavy metal influence for fans of Black Sabbath, St. Vitus, Pentagram, The Gates of Slumber, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest. Now, The Gates of Slumber must be a pretty big doom band. Um, I'm not the biggest straight up doom fan uh, but uh, for them to have been called out on the hype sticker they must be quite good so maybe i should check them out but scalibur is a king arthur king arthur even um themed album it's um concept album that's it 
um, all the songs relating to King Arthur. And it's one of those albums that really it does um, it does make a lot more sense. As I said, I listened to it a few years ago, and then to be honest, completely forgot about it. And I've got quite a few albums like that. I'm ashamed to say, but that I'm going back and enjoying now. Um, this is on a blue, lovely blue vinyl with custom labels. Uh, as I say, it tells a, it tells a great story, but as with a lot of concept albums, if you you listen to them and you think like, well, okay, it's music, um, you really have to kind of read along with the lyrics to understand you know what it is they're they're banging on about and why they're banging on about it. And this goes through the life of um, uh, King Arthur, coming of the King, Lance at the Lake, Forbidden Love, Enemy Within, The Grail Quest. Uh, a Dream to Summer, Nightmare to Others, The Death of Arthur, and Avalon as the final track. It's a great story from start to finish. Really well um, written. Lovely, nice, shiny uh, stock lyric card. This came out on Shadow Kingdom Records, but a uh, thoroughly enjoyable listen. Um, I, <laughs> the only reason why this stayed in the inbox for so long was because I was just buying so much stuff at the time. But uh, I'm getting around and I'm listening to them now, and I'm really enjoying I enjoyed. Check out their other albums as well. They are a great uh, British uh, doomy metal band. Um, Slayer, Repentless. Uh, again, I picked this up a couple of years ago in a HMV sale. Um, wasn't in a Slayer mood at the time, I probably, because I, I ebbs and flows. Um, but I grabbed it because it was a great price. So 2015, can you believe it? Seven years since the uh, Slayer hung up their boots recording albums. Um, it's a fantastic way to sign off really really good album uh a return to form there's the gatefold obviously gary holt was in the band at the time um delusions of a savior has a familiar ring to it if you know that song repentless is an absolute awesome song as is uh cast the first stone uh, you against you as well. It's got it's got that it's it's angry Slayer, but it's also really really well produced. Obviously, this is on Nuclear Blast, as you would expect it to be. I think it was just plain black vinyl, although we have uh, a it's an inner. It's kind of like a gatefold inner with the album artwork and the lyrics. But I've been on a bit of a Slayer kick uh in, in this last week thanks to some vclt i got uh, recently i think this is just the uh, just the plain black vinyl version with a uh slayer uh half pentagram sword type thing going on but uh killer album uh, i've got repentless the killology also in the inbox so that will probably come out for the next vinyl update i do we'll see <laughs> or maybe it'll take another three or four years to get to it uh, let's stay on the thrash metal kick. And uh, another example album I bought when it came out. I bought when it came out because uh, the Raging Tides by Exuma was my favourite album in God. Well, that must have been 2016 that came out. This came out in 2019. Hostile Defiance, uh, Exuma's fifth album. Um, German thrash metal for those that don't know i'm sure most of you do though but for me exuma are um they're still at the top of their game they are like a, there's a lot of 80s thrash bands that feel like they're just kind of going through the motions um people will buy whatever stuff they put out but exuma to me are still bringing it they're still trying hard to write that perfect album and uh, this was a fantastic follow-up to the raging tides um I would say, and I'm going out on a limb here, but um, Exuma to me are maybe second only to uh, Testament in 80s classic thrash bands that are still absolutely uh, bringing it. Uh, this is what's this is a Metal Blade release. It was on orange, red, marbled vinyl, limited to 400 copies worldwide. Not really seeing too much of the marble in there. I kind of see a, a little bit when I hold up the light, but it's basically just clear. Orange. This comes with an absolutely huge 
poster. Uh, I'm going to do that thing where I say I'm not going to get it out, and then I'll get it out anyway. But it's, what size is that? Is this A1? Won't fit the whole thing on the screen, but it's, uh, if, if I was one of those people, as I was when I was younger, that would put up posters, I would put that one up. I think the artwork for this album is absolutely superb. It's one of those ones where the, the detail comes the more that you uh, look at it. But, um, yes, what else do we have in here? We have a uh, download card, which I've used already, so tough luck. And, um, yes, the uh, credits and lyrics on a uh, very nicely done quality card stock uh, in a sheet. Title track, Hostile Defiance, a Raptor. Um, Dust Eater, brilliant song. Um, vertical Violence, but yes, start to finish, top to bottom, all the way through. However, many different ways I say it, it's all the same thing. Hostile Defiance, 2019, Exuma. Get that in your thrash collection if you're not already. Last album for today, I uh, have a certain Metal Mickey to thank for this one. It's one I was looking at for a while. Showed it in uh, my Roadrunner video a while back now, um, a week or two ago maybe. Yes, time flies, and that's uh, Doctor Mastermind. Sorry, the, the the only '80s original that I have in this collection. Much harder to find these days. Or well, there's not actually that much that I'm really in the market for, if I'm completely honest. But um, yeah, Doctor Mastermind. I've always wanted this one for the the, the cover alone, um, but the cover doesn't really tell the story, does it? Um, the hype sticker tells a story, though. The hype sticker tells me that it's a high-speed chase through the pages of heavy metal vocal Hall of Fame takes us to 1988 with the emergence of Dr. Mastermind, a potent metal song writer vocalist with an album full of guitar-laden anthems backed by virtuosity of ex-Steeler driver guitar hero Kurt Jones and double bass riff monster Dean Castronovo, known for his work on Tony McAlpine's Maximum Security album. Dr. Mastermind combines high-energy songs with incredible instrumental chops, resulting in an album you don't want to pass by. Um, Dr. Mastermind, I first heard about, I think it was on the... Um, this was a Roadrunner Road Runner album uh, as well. Um, the compilation Guitar Masters, I think it was. Um, but, as I say, Kurt James is the guitar master rather than Dr. Mastermind. Dr. Mastermind uh, is on bass and uh, vocals. And it kind of feels... I mean, this is... Don't get me wrong, this is a good album. There are some good tracks on here. Uh, the Villa, 2631, uh, Domination, Abuser. Um, it, it's, it's a good album, but... I kind of get the feeling that Kurt and Dean only agreed to be on it so Kurt could noodle and Dean could have a drum solo. Um, drum solos don't really have a place on a studio album, if you ask me. He's very good. He's he's probably a brilliant drummer. Um, I'm sure he is. Um, but I don't, I don't want to sit at home. It's like you want to sing along to tracks. You want tracks that are familiar. But if another drum solo is coming, that's like an, an instant skip for me. Hear it once. Yeah, great. Well done. But then I don't need to hear it again. And when you, it's not even at the end of the album. So, um, yes, I don't get it. I don't even get when um, they put drum solos on live albums either. It was all the rage in the 80s. People, um, you go to a live show and everybody would do a, uh, a solo. The guitarist would all do a solo. The bass player would do a solo. And the, and the drummer would do a solo as well. And if you're caught up in the moment in the gig, great, fine. But it's, it's a waste of wax you ask me but um they didn't ask me they just put it on there anyway and uh, i have to stuck with it so yes dr mastermind it's uh it's kind of a little bit over the top there's wasp influences he looks a little bit back, like blackie doesn't he um but it's overall a decent album wouldn't make my top 10 by any means and it's on uh roadrunner of which i have shown plenty of Roadrunner recently. Uh, in fact, I've picked up a couple more since I made that video, so uh, 
straight away. Um, one of the reasons why I don't always do collection videos is uh, it, it bugs me when they're out of date pretty much as soon as I make them. But I'll show that one last time, Dr. Mastermind. So there we are, that's five albums that have made their way from the inbox onto the shelves. Uh, and hopefully they'll get pulled out again and played sometime. But in the meantime, let me know what you think of these five, and I will uh, see you again soon. Thanks for watching.